this is, well, another episode of Sermons. I do apologize that I do not have a shirt on. Like I said in my previous video, it's hot in here. And the sermon is going to be on worrying. And the readings for references in the Bible will take place from the Lutheran Study Bible. I encourage everyone that's Lutheran and not Lutheran to get this Bible. It has everything that the other Bibles don't. Right, here we go. When it comes to worrying, we all stress about the littlest of things. In the Bible, it says that we are not to stress. If we live a life filled with nothing but stress, it will put us in our grave way before it is our time. Medical problems can arise from stress, and our hair can even turn to gray or bald completely. Jesus even told us not to stress. Since stress can cause violence, hatred, medical problems, anger, saying things that are hurtful. Sorry, I lost my track. I wrote everything down. Jesus told us not to stress since stress can cause violence, hatred, medical problems, anger, saying things that are hurtful. And we are to forgive as Christ forgave the Roman soldiers for beating him. Jesus forgave the Jewish people that condemned him. He also forgave Peter for denying him three times before the entire courtyard. The first reading is going to be from Psalms 27, which is found on page 868 in the Lutheran Study Bible. Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When, when evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an, an, though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear, though war rise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple, for he will hide me in his shelter. In the day of trouble, he will conceal me under the covenant, I mean, under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me, and answer me. You have said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek? Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, Cast me not off, forsake me not. O God of my salvation, For my father and my mother have forsaken me. But the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the, go the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Second reading is going to be from Psalms 56, 
in the Luther Study Bible, page 901. To the, to the choir master, according to the dove on far off Terebinth, a miktam of David when the Philistines seized him in Gath. Be gracious to me, O God, for man tramples on me. All day long an attacker oppresses me. My enemies trample on me all day long. For many attack me proudly. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? All day long they injure my cause, all their thoughts are against me for evil. They stir up strife, they lurk, they watch my steps as they have waited for my life. For their crime, will they escape? In wrath, cast down the peoples, O God. You have kept my account of my tossings. Put my ears in your bottle. Are they not in your work and not in your book? Then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. This I know that God is for me. In God, whose word I praise. In the Lord, good I mean, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? I must perform my vows to you, O God. I will render thank offerings to you. If you have delivered my soul from death, yes, my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Now we're going to continue on. Judas, he was a f he was also fallen under stress. He did not like Jesus. He loved money more than he liked Jesus. He thought if he betrayed Jesus, he could be happy with money. With the stress of betraying someone you care about, there can be mixed emotions. You may want someone dead but you may also love them and you will miss them. When Judas betrayed Jesus Christ, he was filled with nothing but anger for himself, returning his back on Jesus. He went to a field where he saw a dead camel. With the dead camel, he saw a rope. When he saw the rope, he started stressing big time, which sent him to hell. He hanged himself with a rope, by tying it to a tree, not a cross, a tree. That stress that, kid, that filled Judas made him a murderer and a traitor at the same time. Peter denied Christ as he was scared and truly did not want to die for Jesus. Look at Cain. He killed his own brother, Abel. He killed Abel since Abel's work was getting praised and recognition. But Cain's work wasn't getting recognition from his parents, wasn't getting recognition from God. He got stressed and filled with jealousy. He killed Abel. He wanted he wanted just to be praised. But the only one to praise is God since he can rise people from the dead if he wishes. Stress can influence bad decisions. Those bad decisions will wind you up in the grave or in prison. There have been school shootings. The main cause for the shootings are anger and hatred that the shooter has for the people. The shooters are most likely bullied and have a mental disorder. And they do not know how to handle it. With improper anger management, people will hurt each other out of anger and hatred. Terrorist organizations are based off hate and anger. 
They do not see the error of their ways. Many terrorist organizations are hating the United States of America for invading their country and stealing their oil and attempting to change the type of government that is currently and still being used in the Middle East. Terrorist organizations are also hating many nations for whatever reasons that are out there. Christians and Jews are the number one people terrorists do not like. Because they, don't, they only want one religion out there, and that is Islam. Remember, terrorist Muslims, the Shia sect of Islam. Islam is not a religion of terrorism. It is a religion of peace. A lot of people get that mixed up. It is a religion of peace. Now we are going to be reading from, we're going to do the final readings, from Matthew, uh, readings from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34, and it's going to be found on page 1591 in the Lutheran Study Bible. See here, chapter six, twenty-five, fifty-four. Found it. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hair, I mean a single hour, to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. How they groove, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore... Do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And now we're going to be reading Luke chapter 12, verse 4 to 7. Then we're going to go to 22 to 34. And that is on page Okay, Luke 12, verse 47. I tell you, my friends, 
Do not fear those who kill the body, and after that have nothing more that they can do. But I warn you of whom to fear. Fear him after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies, and not one of them is forgotten before God? Why even the hairs of your head are all numbered? Fear not, you are of more value than many sparrows. Now we're going to go to verses 22 to verse 34. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? Of, and which of you, by being anxious, get a single hour to the lifespan? If then you are not able to do a small, I mean, to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are about to eat and what you are about to drink, nor be worried. For all these nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions, give to the needy, provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart be also. So from what the Bible is telling us, not to be afraid, do not be anxious about anything like that. Stress can cause bloodshed, just like with all the shooters and terrorist attacks. Stress can kill people and shorten their lives. That will put the individual in their grave early. Stress is a killer, and it is time to put all our anxiety and stress to Jesus Christ. He died for our sins, and it is time we live since he died for us. He died so we can live. May the peace of Jesus Christ be put on all of you. Amen and amen.